Uh, thank you, Chairman. Actually, I'm glad we coming in at this time because we need to set the record straight about the Senate bill and actually HR2. When the Senate bill was actually published, I remember I was, in a, I was at a dinner uh, Sunday night when it came out, when the text came out. I read the text of the Senate bill. Many members in the House read the text of the Senate bill. Members contacted Speaker Johnson, and we were very clear. There, should, there is no way the Senate bill should get a vote in the House because it is a terrible piece of legislation that will not secure the southern border. Um, House Republicans have passed border security measures, H.R. 2. We did it more than a year ago. Has Chuck Schumer brought it up for even debate or a vote in the Senate? No, he has not. Has the White House decided to reach out to the Speaker Johnson to debate and deliberate or negotiate or compromise on H.R. 2 and its elements to secure the southern border? No, they have not. They're in charge in the Senate and in the White House. They've done nothing except a bill that couldn't even make it out of the Senate. So I think it's important to set the record straight. Oh, also, by the way, House Republicans weren't gonna vote for that bill, and that was before Donald Trump even made his, his view known on the Senate compromise bill. We were already against it when the bill text came out because this is a trash bill. Now, moving on. Ms. Genesekera, I think I, I think I got it right. Can you explain to me what an environmental impact assessment is? Uh, yeah, certainly. It's, a, it's an assessment a federal agency does to measure a proposed project's potential impact on the environment. Does the, does the, does the uh, Biden-Harris administration, does their EPA use environmental impact assessments? Um, they do in some applications. Typically, it's in the context of the national of NEPA, um, which is in conjunction with other federal agencies. But yes, uh, if you're trying to go through the process of, let's say, limiting uh, permit applications for leases that have been uh, extended to to private drillers, would an environmental impact assessment be the way that you would do that? It certainly is a tool that this administration has used. It's to analyze it to death um, or to keep it in bureaucratic purgatory, which with a lot of important infrastructure projects um, we've actually seen, this administration has backtracked on important infrastructure um, improvements that we put in place to limit time for review, to limit the scope of review that this administration, again, has changed to the detriment of building out energy infrastructure projects, highway infrastructure projects, and on and on. Would you argue that this administration is, is pretty adept at using these types of reviews to slow walk energy development projects in the United States? The Biden-Harris administration is an expert at using the federal government and weaponizing those processes to undermine the development of key energy projects that we need. Thank you so much. Ms. Mobs, I have a question for you. You said in your opening uh, testimony that uh, there have been embassies that have been lost slash evacuated. Um, how many embassies have, I'm gonna just say evacuated, have been evacuated under the Biden-Harris administration? There's been seven total evacuations, and then there's been numerous partial evacuations. What's a partial evacuation of a U.S. embassy? It's when non-assertion personnel are removed for safety purposes and then can return later. What are the foreign policy, uh, uh, I would say, what, what's, what's the foreign policy, what's, what's going on in foreign policy in a specific country that would require the United States to do a partial evacuation of an embassy? So the situation would have deteriorated so critically that they felt that they could not establish protection for those non-essential personnel for them to be kind of forced to leave. Um, in, in any particular, any administration, let's say the last 30 years, how many embassies have been lost over the last 30 years, evacuated either total or partial? I don't have the number in front of me. I could get it to you. I think the important thing here, though, is that because there's a historic number, it's because of the unprecedented levels of chaos and instability and the inability of our State Department and certainly the executive to project enough strength and power to protect, protect our embassies and our embassy officials around the world. Would you say that this State Department has done a fair job, an average job, a terrible job of getting Americans out of harm, harm, harm's way in uh, countries that are experiencing serious uh, security questions for the United, for United States citizens? I think we've seen substantial and significant problems in a number of different theaters where the State Department has failed to effectively plan to ensure that American citizens are safely returned to their home. Do you think that in Afghanistan it was wise for us to pull our troops out last and for the State Department to not do everything possible to get Americans out before it was turned over to the Taliban? I deeply believe we should never leave an American behind. I was a huge advocate of withdrawing from Afghanistan. We were spending $2 trillion there, almost 300 million of US taxpayer dollars there every day. But what we saw was basically a catastrophic 
failure of the State Department, of the DOD, of our intelligence agencies, of the National Security Council, of the National Security Advisor to effectively coordinate an effective strategy to allow our interests to remain and to get American citizens safely out. Thank you. I yield back. Gentlemen, yields